The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Today I will talk about Ghana. I will talk about Ghana and our love for the nation Ghana. The vision for the Church of Pentecost that we are working with is to possess nations. When we are talking about possessing the nations, we are saying that we want to equip the church to transform every sphere of society in the country. That is what we mean. So the target is transforming society. The target is the nation. It is the society. With values and principles of the kingdom of God. You see, the purpose of the church on earth is to continue what Jesus began to do and to teach. Let me just say that again. The purpose of the church on earth is to continue what Jesus began to do and to teach. Because there is a part of the church also in heaven. When you leave us by way of death, you join the church in heaven. But the church on earth has a purpose. And the purpose is continue from where Jesus left off. Whatever he came to do and to teach, we continue from there. So that is the mandate of the church. When Jesus was living, he gave the disciples a mandate, the great commission. Now I want you to just look at me and listen to this one closely. He told the disciples... That go into the world. Now here the disciples means the church. So he says go into the world. What that means is that the great commission happens outside the church. What we are doing here is not great commission. What we are doing here is in-house service. We are here to worship God. So that he will prepare us to go outside these walls. To do the great commission. So the church is not the focus of the Great Commission. The Great Commission is outside there. But the church has always been God's instrument and factor and vehicle that he uses to travel into the world. So when we are here and we don't think about the nation, then we have not understood the Great Commission. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. This purpose should be the church's agenda. So we are also here to seek and to save that which was lost. His wish is that none should perish. And that is the church's wish too. And so I want us to begin to pay attention to the nation. Last Saturday, we went out and we were cleaning gutters and cleaning the dirt in town. It isn't that we don't have anything to do. We are not Zoom lions. But you see, we want the people in the world, the watching world, to see Jesus walking on the streets. Amen. See, they will not come and join us here. Our shouting and our tongues and our worshiping, they do not care. They want to see Jesus on the streets. So we want to pay attention to the nation. We want to pay attention to the nation. But you see, you cannot save that which you do not love. Let me say that again. You cannot save that which you do not love. That is why scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave. The love comes before the giving. And his giving was a sacrifice. The Bible says that even though he is God, he made himself nothing for the sake of the one he loved. That is the world, the sinner. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever 
believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Brothers, everyone on the planet earth, his sin or her sin has been paid for on the cross. It is up to you and I to let them know that their debt has been paid for so that they will just respond to their salvation and God will give them eternal life. So it is not enough sitting here and then enjoying ourselves in the presence of God while some are dying and going to hell. The church's focus is the world. And for us, is the nation. Ghana is our motherland. We don't have any other nation. Ask chapter 17. Ask 17, please. Ask 17, 26. From one man, he made all nations. From one man, if you like, Adam. Or better still, from Noah. Because Adam's generation was wiped out. And then God chose Noah. So it can represent, the man here can represent Adam or Noah. That they should inhabit the whole earth. God made nations. So when he's, God is thinking, he doesn't think in terms of church or individual. He thinks in terms of nations. He made nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out the appointed times in history. What this means is that he marked the time that you should arrive on earth. When Abraham Lincolns were born, our time had not come for us to arrive. When the Machians came, our time had not come for us to arrive. When the Wu's came, we were not here. So God knows why you are here at this time. So at the appointed time, you have arrived. And then listen, that is not all. He marked out the appointed times in history and boundaries of their lands. Don't think that the Columbus and Co. Uh, surveyed the world and then they marked their boundaries because of trade and all that. God moved them. Just as God moved the Peters to write scripture, he moved all these people, the Napoleon, Bonaparte, and all that. He moved them to set boundaries because the Bible says that he has marked out our boundaries. So this is our boundary, a small country called Ghana. And he desires to place us here. And then we must cherish that and love it. He is not saying that remain in your boundary, no. But he has given us boundaries. It doesn't mean that you cannot travel outside the boundary, no. But this is our boundary and we should love it. Young people, are you here? It is your generation that think America, think America. <laughs> You think America is... So when I was growing up, I thought when you were a white man, you don't die. But when I realized that they die, I said, oh, let's forget about this thing. Yeah, I thought that the white man would not die. But when people are sick and we take them there, they still die. So they aren't better than us. God created all of us and he decided to give us colors. He painted some like yellow, others like pink, others close to white. And then he gave us this pigment. And even as he still makes some darker and others lighter. So what does that mean? He made some taller and some short. There are certain of us who do not even accept how we have been made. When you are short and a preacher man is preaching and he begins to talk about Zacchaeus, he begins to shake. You see, he doesn't like the image he has. But God has made you who you are. Accept yourself and let us accept this country. There is no better place than home. You cannot save that which you do not love. So this is our motherland. We should love Ghana. Okay, let's stand up and sing this song. Soon, soon, crown, crown, best son. Soon, soon. Crom, crom, besa, papa, gana, benya, shilpo. Let me guess. You see, when you want to know the theology of a people, you listen to their songs. This is the 
song sung by our forebears, those who went before us. This is the church of Pentecost. And they are saying that if you believe, and I also believe, and we together work. So they believed in work. And they say, when you work, Ghana will have revival. So revival is not speaking in tongues and rolling on the floor. That is not only revival. We want this nation to experience revival. Revival in peace, revival in prosperity. So that the young people who finish school, even with first degree, can confidently say that I've got a job. They can confidently own a car because the banks will know that now he has gotten a job and so he can pay the installment. People shouldn't finish school and then you see them still working like this because for five years they've not gotten any job. May the Lord lift the head of Ghana and may she experience revival. Amen. This is the song that our forebears sang. The second verse of this says that instead of saying ye bubum aye, you might say na ye boom bo empire. When we together pray, the Holy Spirit will come down and Ghana will experience revival. Certain of them said that in Ghana will have peace and Ghana will have prosperity. Let's take it for the last time.
shall be taken a seat. Oh, chapter 29 verse 7 Jeremiah 29 verse 7 also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers you too will prosper Let me read that again. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into Ezra. Now, we are not carried into Ezra. We are living in our own motherland. Even if those who are in Ezra should seek the prosperity of the nation or the city wherein they have been carried, how much more us those of us who are living in our own nation, why should we curse the land with our mouth and spite the country? Say, so seek the prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into Ezra. Pray to the Lord for it. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. How come this scripture? See, Israel as a nation, was delivered from Egypt. God had promised Abraham that he's going to make out of him a great nation. But he continued that his people will be strangers in a land for 430 years. After 430 years, God through Moses and Aaron delivered Israel. When they crossed the Red Sea and they saw with their eyes how God had buried Pharaoh and his riders. They praise God. They sang for their liberation. If you like their independence, it is like a saga for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah on that glorious day when he stood at the polo grounds and said, at long last, the battle is ended and Ghana, your beloved country, is free forever. It was a liberation. It was joyous. People danced and drowned. They jumped up high. Liberation. But today, after a while, we still think that maybe we should have hung around with the white people. And now we just go to them and beg them to give us something. And we'll pay it in 100 years. But somehow, through sin and rebellion, Israel found herself in Babylon. And what happened to them there was worse than what happened to them in Egypt. Nebuchadnezzar besieged Jerusalem and took Israel to Ezra. He left a couple of them, but those weaklings and elderly people, he left them back in Jerusalem. So Israel was in Babylon as slaves again. They suffered under Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. Those days while they were still in Ezra, some prophets in Ezra and some also in Jerusalem decided to prophesy. And they were prophesying peace. And that some of them were prophesying that God's deliverance, predicting that God is going to deliver them soon. Meanwhile, God has not said anything. So God told Jeremiah the prophet to go to the king's palace. The king Zedekiah. He should strap some wood and then put it behind him like a yoke. When he gets to the king's palace, he should tell the king, look at me. Just as I have this wood yoked, so are you going to be under the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar? Don't make any attempt to get out because you cannot get out. 
Because I have given the lands and the nations to Nebuchadnezzar to deal with them. That is God. And it's not only about Judah. He says same to Edom, to Amnon, to Sidon, to Ty. So he said this to the king to warn the false prophets. But you see, when people are in hardship, they become vulnerable to all kinds of predatory tricks and tactics. It is like what is happening in our nation now. When you go to church on a good Sunday morning like this, by this time anointing oil is flowing. By this time water is being sprinkled. By this time aprons are on, on sale. And people are shouting. They are saying that tomorrow by this time. People are shouting amen. And the day breaks and nothing has happened. People are in hardship. The devil said something. And what he said carries a lot of truth. So let's go and read what the devil said in scripture. Job chapter 2 verse 4. Job 2, 4. Can we read together? Ready, go. Skin for skin, Satan replied. A man will give all he has for his own life. This is Satan. He's saying that, if you like, let me touch his skin now. I dealt with his properties and he's still praising you. Okay, let me touch his body. Because a man will give all he has in exchange for his soul or his life. When a human being sees that his life is ebbing away, he will do everything possible to save his soul. This is the interpretation of what the devil is saying. When people see that there's no hope, whatever you tell them, they will do it. Our Ghanaian folks, our girls are being carried out of the nation. They just go there and then they sell their body for food. Sometimes you can't fault them. Looking at their backgrounds and where they come from. They don't see any hope in their life. And they, but they want to survive. Some young men will go and sleep in coffins. And hope that they can do that for seven days. They wake up late in the night when all of us are asleep. And they go to the cemetery. Something that they would never have done. But somebody is telling them that if you're able to do this, you will come out of poverty forever. And they dare it and they do it and still it doesn't give them the needed joy. When people are in hardship, these predatory tricks, they become vulnerable to them. That is why in a nation like this, when it is 31st, especially in a year like this, people predict who will become the president. Because and people want a president who will be throwing money on them. Because we need money. I pray that God will have mercy upon us. So the prophets will not stop prophesying. Despite what Jeremiah told the king to tell them. There was this prophet called Hananiah. He went to the church house and started prophesying. Jeremiah was also there. The other, the other priests were also around. And to the hearing of the whole congregation, that thou says the Lord, two years from today, all the articles that were taken out of the temple will be brought back. And our brethren in Ezra will come back home. Jeremiah listened to it. And he said, ah, praise God. Let's hope this is true. Then we will bless the name of the Lord together. But the prophets who went ahead of us, they never prophesied peace when there is no repentance. So as long as God's anger is on us, if you say two years from now, God will bring us liberation, then let's hope that it happens. He will not stop at that. Hananiah took those who that are on the neck of Jeremiah and broke them. And then said, thou says the Lord. This is how he is going to break the burden of Nebuchadnezzar 
over our people. Don't you think that the people will shout hallelujah? Yeah. <laughs> you see, when you go to churches, they make too much noise. Especially when you say something like that, people will shout hallelujah. They don't want to hear good teaching. They want to, to receive a miracle. You see, God, he trains us. Let me say that to you again. He trains us because we are not vagabonds. We are children. So he trains us. He trains our hands to war. He teaches us so that we'll be able to handle that which he will commit to us. He will teach us to handle women and men, spouses, to handle money, to handle children, to handle living our salvation. He trains us. He's not a magician somewhere. He trains us. 